Next to Normal is a compelling musical penned by American playwright and lyricist Brian Yerke. Its premiere on Broadway in 2009 earned it 11 Tony Award nominations, and the following year it made history as the eighth musical to be honored with the Pulitzer Prize for Drama. Renowned for its nuanced exploration of mental health disorders, particularly bipolar disorder and depression, Next to Normal captivated audiences during its extensive Broadway run, which concluded in January 2011 after over 700 performances. The musical unfolds with Diana, a suburban mother, anxiously awaiting her son's return while simultaneously striving to support her high-achieving daughter, Natalie. The following morning, as the family busily prepares for the day, Diana's husband Dan notices the chaotic sandwich-making frenzy taking over the kitchen. Stepping in to assist his wife, Dan helps prepare the lunches before the children head off to school. Meanwhile, Natalie seeks solace in the school's practice room, where she often finds refuge by the piano. Her moments of solitude are occasionally interrupted by Henry, a classmate who has developed an affection for Natalie and frequently stops to listen to her play. As the weeks progress, Diana attends a series of doctor appointments, with Dan waiting in the car, grappling with his own battle with depression. It is revealed that Diana has been grappling with bipolar disorder and depression for over a decade. Throughout her visits, the doctor adjusts her medication, leading to various side effects. Eventually, the medication numbs her emotions to the point of feeling nothing. Upon sharing this with her doctor, he deems her stable. Meanwhile, Natalie's connection with Henry deepens, and he eventually professes his love for her. In the following weeks, Dan eagerly anticipates a family dinner, where Henry has been invited despite Natalie's reservations. Dan is struck by his wife's recent surge of energy and cheerful disposition, bringing him a sense of joy and hope. However, as Diana emerges from the kitchen with a birthday cake, singing to their son, Dan and Natalie are left stunned. They remind Diana that their son passed away 16 years ago as an infant. Dan suggests another visit to the doctor, but Diana adamantly refuses, dismissing his concerns. Desperate for her trust, Dan pleads with her, but his efforts are met with resistance. In her room, Natalie vents her frustration about the situation to Henry, showing little patience for her mother's actions. Diana enters moments later, attempting to apologize, but Natalie remains unreceptive. Eventually, Diana seeks the help of Dr. Madden, a specialist in drug-free treatment options. Haunted by the ghost of her son, his presence becomes increasingly tangible and persistent. Dr. Madden suggests hypnosis as a means to uncover the underlying cause of Diana's illness. The therapy takes a heavy emotional toll, leaving Dan worried about its impact on his wife's well-being. Diana's condition also begins to strain their family dynamics. Natalie, preoccupied with her mother's absence during her piano recital, struggles to perform at her expected level. Amidst these events, Diana reaches a pivotal decision to let go of her son once and for all. She returns home and starts clearing out his belongings, stumbling upon a music box that holds significance. Suddenly, her son's ghost appears, inviting her to dance and urging her to go away with him. Overwhelmed, Diana attempts suicide and is subsequently hospitalized. Upon her admission, she is restrained and sedated due to self-inflicted wounds on her wrist. The doctor informs Dan that electroconvulsive therapy ECT, is the recommended course of treatment for Diana's condition. Returning home, Dan contemplates the doctor's suggestion while also dealing with the aftermath of the incident that led to Diana's hospitalization. The next day, however, when Madden proposes the treatment to Diana, she reacts angrily, equating it to a barbaric practice of brain surgery. Amidst the conflict, Dan returns to the hospital and successfully convinces Diana that the proposed treatment may be their only solution. Diana undergoes a series of ECT treatments over the following weeks, while Natalie begins experimenting with clubbing and drugs. Upon Diana's return home, she realizes that she has lost memories from the past 19 years. Meanwhile, Henry confronts Natalie at school, as she has been avoiding him since the family dinner. However, this doesn't deter Henry from asking Natalie to the spring dance. Seeking guidance about Diana's memory loss, Diana and Dan visit the doctor once again. The doctor explains that the memory loss is a normal side effect of the treatment. Dr. Madden encourages Diana to have more in-depth conversations with Dan about their son and his memories. 
At home, Diana goes through her son's belongings, once again discovering the music box. Despite Dan's attempts to stop her, Diana is overwhelmed by the flood of memories and demands to know her son's name. However, Dan refuses, insisting that she should consult the doctor for additional treatments. Later, on the night of the spring dance, Henry arrives at the house to pick up Natalie. The two witness the struggle between Dan and Diana as Dan tries to take the music box from his wife. In the midst of the commotion, the music box slips from their hands and shatters into pieces. Diana returns to the doctor once more, expressing her concern about the effectiveness of her medication. She begins to realize that the issue lies not with her mind but with her soul. Dr. Madden reassures her that relapses are common and suggests additional ECT treatments. Despite Diana's adamant refusal, the doctor persistently urges her to reconsider, emphasizing the chronic and potentially fatal nature of her condition. As her mental health deteriorates, Diana reaches a decision to separate from her husband. She realizes that she cannot constantly rely on him and recognizes the need to confront and manage her condition independently. Upon returning home, Natalie discovers her father sitting in darkness, overcome with tears. She reassures him that they will find a way to navigate through this challenging time together. Unfortunately, appeals to Dr. Madden prove futile as, nearing the end of the musical, the doctor provides the grieving husband with a referral to seek help from another mental health professional. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.